and taking about three more breaths in your child's pose. And on your next inhale, slowly coming up into your tabletop position. Finding a few cat cows, planting your palms underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. Your inhale, you look up, curling the tailbone. And then exhale, rounding out through your spine. Just do that a few more times. This week is a little bit more freestyle, so allow the body to explore different angles, different movements. You could come into your puppy dog, where the shoulders and hips sway from side to side. Maybe even a thread the needle. So taking a few more breaths here, just continue to move as your body wants to. Maybe that's even just maintaining a child's pose. If you want to be a little bit more passive, or if there's any kind of pain or strain in your lower back. Taking about three more breaths wherever you are. Good. Tucking your toes under and then slowly bringing your body into your first downward dog. Walking out your feet when you get there, shaking out the head a little bit, maybe even pulsing the chest toward the thigh bones, getting a little bit of movement and energy, letting that spine lengthen, letting the sit bones reach high, and then allowing the shoulders to settle, allowing the heels to ground down. Taking about five breaths here. You want to keep your breath ujjayi styled in and out of the nose. Good, walking the big toes together to touch. Let's inhale the right leg up toward the ceiling, holding it there, keeping an internal rotation so the kneecap faces the ground, and then press firmly through the right leg so the leg is straight. Take two breaths here while trying to maintain left heel grounding. Good, taking an inhale, knee to the nose one time, exhale. Three-legged downward dog, kick it back up. Hold, stack your hips. Option one, the leg can remain straight and long, or option two, bending the knee. Trying to stack firmly that right hip on top of the left so the hips are open toward the right side of the room, but then square your shoulders off and then reset through the upper body. Taking about one more breath. Good, inhale, warrior two, stepping the right foot in between the palms, front knee to heel alignment, drop the back heel down, and then windmill yourself up. Set all your shoulders down. Pay attention if you do have a mirror that both arms are the same height. Ground down your shoulders so the heart center stays lifted, and then find a little bit more depth in through the right knee, so it's trekking toward the pinky toe. Okay, we're gonna take about two breaths here, looking past your right fingertips, Yeah, rerouting right back to your breath. We're going to introduce just a bit of movement. So you're going to reverse your warrior on an inhale, where the back palm comes down to the thigh, the right arm reaches up toward the ceiling. And then on an exhale, you're going to come into your extended side angle, where the elbow rests on the thigh. Inhale to reverse. Exhale to extend. Good. Take about three more rounds. Last round. Taking the eyes to look up the right fingertips and then switch taking the eyes to look up the left fingertips. For your two to come back, reset, keeping that quadricep firm, active. Softening through your toes, keeping the weight onto the outsteps of your feet. Take about one more breath here. Good. Straightening out through the right leg, reaching the upper body forward, and then slowly tilt at the sideline. Your palm can plant down onto the shin. If you've got a block there, you could take your block underneath your palm so you have a little bit more height. Listen to your body, okay? Trigonasana triangle, rolling that shoulder blade back of the left. And if it's comfortable, you can look past the left fingertips 
or keep the eyes looking forward the same height as your heart. We're here for just a few breaths. Try to squeeze your left glute. That's gonna help to maintain foundation so you can press the hips forward and try to maintain alignment through the front end of your body. Breathing higher in through the chest for your final three. Eyes toward the right big toe, bending through the knee. Warrior two, come back. Reverse your warrior, inhale. Cartwheel the palms down, high plank. Skip a vinyasa today. You're gonna come right back into a downward dog. So reaching those hips up toward the ceiling, walking out your feet, shaking out the hips. Like with anything, if you do too much of it, there, there can always be potential of damage and injury. So just be smart with how many times you go through certain power poses or flow sets. Okay, everything in moderation. Let's take those big toes together to touch. Left leg up, keeping that internal rotation, focus on your breath, keeping the muscles in your back engaged, flexed and keep the area at the front of the body open and long as you breathe there for two more breaths. Good, taking an inhale, knee to the nose, one time exhale. Three-legged downward dog, kick it up. Hold, stacking your hips. Option one, straight leg. Option two, bent knee. You can always change it anytime you practice. Try to get that left glute squeeze, get that left shoulder grounded, and then reset, planting your palm. There should be no gap between your palm and the mat. You're here for just a few more breaths. Try to soften through your right toes so you keep the weight on the heel, more outstep of the foot. Keep the heart reaching toward the thigh. Taking one more inhale. Warrior two, left foot steps forward, front heel back arch alignment, and now we're switching sides. Okay, rolling the shoulder blades back, settle through the uh, center of the chest, and then find a little bit more depth now coming into your left thigh, trying to keep your shoulders right over top of the hips. Getting a few breaths here, you want to feel that squeeze in through the back finding stillness, and it takes a little bit for the body to actually recalibrate, to feel the posture. So try not to mentally get in your own way. This is why we want to focus presence, moment to moment breath. Taking about two more. Good, come into that reversed warrior. Right palm plants down, left arm up, inhale. And then on an exhale, you're going to windmill forward, extended side angle, okay? When you're ready, inhale. Exhale. Continue. Three more rounds now. Last round, getting that full breath in, full extension out. Come back into your warrior two, hold. Settle through your shoulders, pressing through that left leg, straighten out through the knee, hinge the upper body forward, and then slowly tilt through that side line. If you were to do this up against the wall, you want both hips to touch and then both shoulders. Remember your option. Respect your body, you only have one. If you need to plant a block underneath your palm. This way also, you could find more height and you could really work on lengthening and also strengthening through the side obliques, okay? Roll that left shoulder blade back so there's a slight external rotation and then squeezing that back left glute. Holding here for a few more breaths. Good. Eyes toward the left big toe. Warrior two, come back. Good. Let's reverse. Inhale. Cartwheel the palms down. High plank. Downward dog. 
five breaths in through the nose, out of the nose. Bending at the knees, look toward the top of the mat, crossing at the ankles, and then making your way onto the sit bones in the middle. Reaching the legs forward, lift up the hips a few times so you find your two sit bones if you need to walk the flesh and the muscle back and out. And you're just going to finish up here in a Navasana boat pose. So you're going to lift up through the toes, settle your shoulders down and back. You can always open up the arms if you'd like. You can maybe lift up your feet. If that's too much, you can alternate. Or you can always just stay here. So wherever you're at today, find your posture set, looking past the big toes, getting into your drishti point, and try to keep the chest lifted, front of the core line stays uh, tightly engaged. Try to maintain stillness and calm as we're here for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, palms to the backs of your thighs, sit up, stand up, out of the mouth, shoulder lift, out of the mouth. Good. So as the feet come together, coming forward, rounding your spine in a butterfly. Closing the eyes. Breathing into the spaces of the body where there's a little bit more tension, where it feels a little tight, restricted. Helping hands slowly rolling up the spine. Taking the right ear to the right shoulder. Nod the head up and down when you get there. So it's favoring the right side of the room. You can keep the eyes open or closed. There's no rush. Chin toward the chest. Switch. Left ear up to the left shoulder. Gentle head nods up and down. Keeping the area of the forehead relaxed, the belly soft. Good, chin to the chest, three ujjayi breaths, keeping head heavy. Making the eyes open, bringing your way into table, directly into your child's pose. Resting there for a few breaths. Once again, if that lower back is feeling a little bit sore today and you want a little bit more of a yin leg support and stretch, knees together. If you're feeling a little bit more active, you want to keep engagement through the muscles of your back, then you could take the knees a little bit wider with the toes staying together. Take a moment here to just settle your shoulders and take about five to ten breaths. 